Hello there, I'm Gary Sims and this is Android Authority. Now you may have heard of Android Go and how it started to appear on certain low-end Android devices. For example, I recently reviewed the Nokia One, which is an Android device running Android Oreo 8.1 Go Edition. So that does lead us to the question, what is the difference between normal Android and Android Go? Well, if you wanna find out, please let me explain. Okay, the first thing I'm saying about Android Go is it is actually Android. It isn't a kind of cut down version or a kind of a semi-compatible version. It is Android and you can actually, when you go to the Play Store, you have access to all the normal apps that your hardware could physically support. Obviously, if it hasn't got a very good GPU or it hasn't got very good CPU performance, then there are gonna be some limitations in what it can do. But in terms of compatibility, it can run all the normal Android apps. So from that point of view, this is just Android. Android. But there are four things that we need to point out that tell us about the difference between standard stock Android and Android Go. The first one is about performance. Now Google have spent a lot of time tweaking the Android Go sources so that it works better on devices with one gigabyte of memory or even less. They've also done a lot to make sure that the apps start up quicker, that they are able to run with a reasonable performance on a low-end device. So the first point is performance. And Google Play itself will actually recommend for you light or kind of Go apps, including Google's Android Go apps, apps that are designed to run better on low-end devices. In fact, app developers have the option to provide two uh, APK files, that's two application files, to the Play Store, one of them being tweaked and tuned specifically for running on low-end devices. And Google Play will actually tell you about those uh, apps when you use the Play Store. Now it isn't only about performance, it's also about storage. So the second point is internal storage. Now many of these devices will come with either eight or 16 gigabytes of internal storage. Now the Nokia One, which I reviewed recently, has eight gigabytes of internal storage. Now on a modern kind of phone from let's say Samsung or OnePlus or Sony or someone like that, that eight gigabytes would just be completely eaten up with kind of Android and the pre-installed apps. But Android Go does two things. First of all, there are the minimum number of pre-installed apps. And secondly, they've Google done a lot of work optimizing the space so that as little as possible is actually used by Android and by those apps. So for example, on the uh, Nokia One, although it's got eight gigabytes, four gigabytes of that is free for uh, files and data and photos, which is quite different. To example, my Note 8, 11 gigabytes are used just for uh, the kind of Android and the system app. So they've really pared that down so that only four gigabytes are used, which means that you, know, you get some free space on an eight gigabyte device. Obviously a 16 gigabyte device would be even better. And linked with that, these Android Go apps like Gmail Go and Maps Go, for example, use much, much less disk space than their counterparts. For example, you're talking just like 60K or 70K for one of these apps rather than two, three, four, five, six, even higher megabytes that would be for the full versions. And the third important thing is data saving. Many of these places where Android Go will be used, people probably don't have access to high amounts of data in their cellular plan. And so therefore, Google are offering various data saving um, uh, features. For example, Chrome itself can actually uh, offer compression for when it's downloading things from the internet. And to do that, it actually sends the data, first of all, to Google servers, and then it compresses it and then sends it down to your phone, and therefore saving your bandwidth when you're using 4G. Of course, there are privacy concerns about that, but Google are obviously saying that they don't store any of that data and it just gets streamed in a compressed form down to your phone. Another data saving feature is that for individual apps, you can specify whether they have access to the 4G LTE network, or whether they should only work over Wi-Fi, whether they can run in the background and so on. And that allows you to pare down how much of your data plan is being used by the Android system. And also the Android Files Go app that is part of Android Go has a really neat way of sharing files between two phones using Wi-Fi. And actually I've started using this myself even on a higher end phone like the Note 8 because it's a really quick way to copy files. So recently someone went to a family event 
and we wanted to copy the files over and I said hey just install files go which we did and then we were able to transfer these uh, photos literally in seconds it was quite amazing because it's doing it at the full speed of Wi-Fi between these two very close devices so they're offering ways of saving data that doesn't mean you have to send things up to the cloud and then back down again which of course could use up your data plan and the fourth thing to talk about is updates. Now, unlike, let's say, the Android that comes on a Pixel device, Android Go does not come directly from Google, it comes from the OEM. So if you buy a device from Nokia or from any other device that's running Android Go, the updates, the security patches, and any updates to the operating system will come from the OEM and not directly from Google. So on the Nokia one that I was reviewing, actually I reviewed it in April 2018, and actually the security update was only from January 2018. So there's already there, we can see a lag in what comes out. But that's the normal story that you get with Android and you have to see which manufacturers, which OEMs are actually providing more timely updates for their version of Android Go. And so there you have it, four things that make Android Go different to stock Android. First of all, it's been tweaked for better performance on low-end devices. Secondly, it's better at handling the storage. And in fact, the Android Go versions of the apps are actually smaller. Thirdly, there are these data saving functions that allow you to save data on your cellular plan. And fourth, it comes from the OEM and not from Google directly itself. My name's Gary Sims and this is Android Authority. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please, you know what I'm gonna ask you to do. Give us a like, do share this on social media, do go down there into the comments and tell me what you think about Android Go. Do also hit that bell notification icon so you become part of our notification squad. Okay, well that's it. I'll see you in the next one.